I am. I just wanted to get the share screen on. Great. There we go. While Charles doing that, this morning we have Charles Jacobs from Retail Capital, where he's head of the commercial retail capital asset finance. Charles, thank you very much for your time and willingness to share your knowledge and expertise with us. We're also lucky enough to have Mark Dawson in the house, who's the managing director of Retail Capital Finance. So guys, he's the guy that's holding all the money. <laughs> During these tough and uncertain times, Retail Capital is here to add value, to recalibrate, rethink, and corona corona proof your practice. Before we get started, just a few house rules. If you hover around the right top hand corner of your screen, you can select between speaker view and gallery view. Please switch over to speaker view as you'll then be able to see his full PowerPoint screen up on your screen. I also ask that you mute and put your videos off. Um, once we open up the floor and you guys can ask questions directly to Charles and Mark, um, you can put your mute, mute off and your videos on. Also, if there's any questions during his presentation, please pop the questions into the chat box. At the end, Mark will ask these questions on behalf of the delegates to Charles. The lecture is being recorded and will be made available on all Iverdent social media platforms as well as on the Iverdent SA YouTube channel. We look forward to listening to you, Charles. Over to you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, I just want to double check and everybody see the screen. Perfect. Okay. So welcome everybody and thank you to Iverdent for giving us an opportunity to have a chat with everybody on the on the on the webinar. Um, I think just to get straight into it is to just share with everybody a bit of context of who we are. So Retail Capital specializes in funding into the SME market and our objective is to get to SME financial inclusion for all. Um, we've been founded since 2011. We've advanced in excess of 3 billion and 22,000 SMEs. Um, we believe in innovation and changing things up uh, and recently got uh, the Global SME Finance Award from um, the Global SME Finance Forum and we specialize in multi-product solutions to SMEs. So various, we customize them, we are involved in, in the asset finance side, fintech space and in, in the funding. But the objective for today is really not to talk about our funding it's is to try and add value and see how we can help um, what we've seen in times like this is that um, there's a lot of information out there and the media tries to sensationalize a lot of it and it's to give an actual cold face um, stand of all our customers where they are currently and what we see and the SME feedback that we get and and to feed that back to to you guys so that you can see that you either on par or not on par with other SMEs and and if we can share anything today that adds value to your business then I think we've achieved your goal uh, or our goal. So we'd like to share the learnings from our current, we've sent out a number of surveys, engagement surveys, contacted clients, we've got massive call centers that engage with them daily and it's really to shape and understand what's currently going on uh, in, in the South African landscape and and what is it that you can do in order to to adapt and and um, come through this this trying times? So I think um, a very apt um, quote that I'd like to share is that there are decades where nothing happens, and then there are weeks where decades happen. And I think I speak on behalf of all of us when we say every day something new. Um, is happening, uh, it, it's different. We're in unprecedented times. And I just wanted to share with everybody that nobody really knows. And if they claim to know how this is gonna end and how it's gonna look on the other side, I think um, be wary because nobody knows. knows. There's simply not enough data to predict what's happening in the future. It will show you trends, but it's not a conclusive fact that how things are gonna end. Um, we don't know how long this is gonna last. I don't think it is a sprint. I think in, if you look at our current economy, it's going to be a marathon. Um, and we thought what we could do is share with you what we do know um, and share some data in the SME market that could pertain to your business. Um, so I'm just trying. So 
what we do know is that the business, how many businesses are currently trading? So we can tell you that of our client base and uh, which is a very fair representation of the SME market, uh, it talks to that 70% of them are actually facing and been affected by the lock and is locked down. Uh, you're looking at 18.7% of them that has opted not to trade during these try trying times, either through location or the areas is not drawing foot traffic, and therefore it's actually not viable for them to, to continue trading during lockdown. And we know that about 11% is still trading, and we know that it says 0.8 there, but it's in excess of 1% of businesses that is liquidated already because of the current lockdown status. Um, we know of the businesses currently trading that um, they are even with trade experiencing about 85% decrease in turnover. We can see that in their businesses. Um, we know that about 11% has been unchanged and there's been a spike of about 4.5%, 5%. And that talks to the essential services that are continuing to trade your FMCGs, um, food supply, and other essential services like pharmacies, retail, et cetera. And then we also know that of these businesses, um, how is the lockdown affecting them um, uh, when they are trading? And only about 12% is trading as normal. Um, a fifth of them, or 23%, is experiencing restricting hours. 22% um, is running on skeleton staff. A fifth of the entire client base has moved business focus online in order to stay um, relevant and competitive. And then we also know that uh, about 19% has closed their businesses temporarily. So we've asked the question to them, so how many of them amidst all this have made plans and have ideas um, to come out of this lockdown uh, and, and what they're going to be doing for it? And, I think it also talks to a large percentile of the market that has never faced a, a pandemic or an economic crisis in their life and they don't really know how to deal with this. Um, you know, they didn't experience the 2008 uh, credit crisis. So uh, a large percentage, which is 76% said, no, they actually don't know. They're just holding on and hoping that they're going to come out of this on the other side. Um, and then only 23% has said, yes, we've actually got plans, we've got ideas, we, we, we're addressing that and, and, and planning to come out of this. So I think what was interesting is that there, there's a big, big sense of business owners that are willing to share knowledge and collaboration. Um, we see that about 84% of them are, are willing to share their plans and ideas, what's working, what's not working in order to help other businesses. Um, so there's a sense of unity and we also did ask them what are you looking for in times like this what, what, what are you what content do you want to see um, and it was multiple selections so of all the CEOs and business owners out there we asked them and they said they they wanting information about business tips and insight and advice they 57% wanted to know what business tools and services are available to serve, to, 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 to aid them in times like this. Um, but 46% wanted to know all the stats and data and the effects it's having um, on the SMEs. And then about almost 30% said, we'd like to learn from industry experts and people that, uh, uh, and, and follow them and understand what, what, what we can do. So, we also wanted to get a sense, and, and, and you guys can measure yourselves in, in line with this, but we wanted to know, has lockdown forced anybody to make a cut to their salaries and or um, had to retrench staff? And 68% of them said, yes, we, we had to ex uh, resort to those measures. 31% um, hasn't. And then what we also did ask them is of... The people that did, was it a combination or was it only retrenchments or reduce reduction in salaries? And 58% has reduced salaries. Um, 27 has retrenched and then there's been that 15.7 or 14.7% that has had to do a combination. 
What was also interesting for us to understand is that there's some funds that during the crisis is available for businesses to aid them and assist them in order to, to come out of this uh, liquid. Um, and we've asked the questions to the SMEs and only half of all the SMEs actually has said, yes, I've registered at the government SME portal in order to get aid. 35% um, uh, of them hasn't done anything. And then there's about 15% that said, unfortunately, they didn't qualify. So we thought what we do is just share with everybody in one place, there's various funds that can help these businesses and help yourselves um, should you qualify. And we, we, it's worth going to have a look at uh, what those funds offer. There's the SMME Relief Finance Facility that will provide soft loan funding. There's the de Debt Relief Financing Scheme for businesses which are negatively affected. Um, directly or indirectly due to the pandemic. There's the CIFA debt restructuring facility, and that's geared towards businesses or SMEs that's already um, has CIFA sort of funding. And there's also the business growth and resilience facility. And those are geared and aimed towards businesses that are, cannot actually keep up with production resulting of supply chain opportunities during the corona pandemic. So there's a shortage of goods and they're trying to keep up with local demand, but they don't actually have the capital available to, to support that. And then there's the SAFT Employer Relief Fund, which we know is part of the Oppenheimer Fund, which assists businesses which are negatively affected directly or indirectly due to the pandemic. Um, it's basically an interest-free loan to the employees over a five-year period. And then there's the IDC facility package, which um, made available 500 million to um, trade finance to import essential medical products and 700 million that's been allocated towards the working capital and equipment and, and machinery, also relating to medical. So we thought, um, let's look at how and tips that you can make your business fighting fit. So the first thing that comes to mind and it's, it's what should be your highest agenda point is to remain liquid. Liquidity is king. So it's the most critical thing for you is to bat down the hatches and, and access all the available facilities you have and ensure that those stay in place. Why do I say that is because in times like this, the financial institutions become very wary, risk averse, and they and your and and your funding facilities dry up. So please ensure that that you're talking to those uh, parties, make sure that your overdrafts remain in play if you access them because it's very important if you're not liquid you have a very very big problem you all know that so um so ensure liquidity and use your best team for the efforts in order to remain relevant and um and in 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 good times, we're using our best people and best teams to look at opportunity and capitalize on opportunities in business. Um, and they're allocated to those opportunistic high priority roles. But relook your team, use your best people in order to ensure that you are in the tough times, um, focusing their efforts on including them for, with the collections, engaging with your customers, raising facilities, um, key engagement with core customers and suppliers. So use your best people for, or your best people in your team for the most critical parts during these trying times. And then from a morale and communication perspective, it's very, very important that we as leaders in our businesses are talking to and speaking to our staff and although we can't control the circumstances, what we can control is our response and our actions to our, our businesses, our practices, our employees, um, because they're looking up to us as leaders and they require us to act with confidence in these uncertain times. Um, if we don't come across that and, and calm them, can you imagine how uh, insecure your staff is feeling in these trying times? So. And it's important to remain hands-on and be in the trenches with them. Um, you have to be in touch with your customers, with your suppliers, with your staff, with your funders, whoever. So it's Im don't, don't remove yourself um, and think that it, it'll go away. You need to be in the face of the business. And in order to, to get through this, we need to plan, look at our policies and strategies. So 
you know, in tough times, um, the best approach is listen to your customers, adapt your policies to work in line with their needs. And even if it's small changes, small changes are better than big things planned. So um, we need to be inventive and investigate. So it's very easy to, uh, to, to get swept up in all the negative information. There are positives out there, but under, understand what's, what's fact versus fear. Um, and once you understand what is fact, align your efforts and initiate new things in line with your plan. So when you have a plan, it shifts the, shifts the balance from being reactive to situations to proactive. And it instills a sense of security with your staff, with your st key stakeholders in your business. And in trying times like this, it's important to innovate. It's not going to be business as usual. When we come out of this, behavior, consumer behavior will have changed. Uh, business behavior will have changed. So it's looking at, don't think as a practice and you had walk-in trade and people coming to see you and booking for appointments, it's always going to remain like that. I think um, the consumers, if you're in touch with them, they're going to be under strain. So it's how do we come up with innovative ideas to still engage? Are we online? Do we have their emails? Can we send them value add? Do you have vouchers available? You sound them treatment packages at discounted rates um, in order to remain relevant with them. So it's looking at key initiatives, re-innovate uh, um, what you're doing, and then understand that where we are now is the new zero. So start where you are now and un explore and leave no stone unturned. Think outside the box. As I said, it's no longer business as usual. And test, you know, test things on a smaller scale. Um, and then also question everything. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a critical step for recalibration is to, to, to question everything and, and, and embrace the change. Uh, we're very weary in times like this to change, but you have to change. Um, and then I'd like to share with you guys the, 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 the saying of don't worry, be crappy. Um, you know, as shared in the words of Michael Ryan from the World Health Organization, perfection is the enemy of good and speed trumps perfection every time. So, you know, we want to try new stuff, try it. Don't wait for it to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. And you won't ga gauge whether it's working or not working. So instead of going to an, into the whole scene of analysis paralysis, try new things, be inventive. Um, and don't worry if it's not the best version of what it should be. At least you are doing something in order to move your business forward. And I think lastly is just to share that, you know, this is the beginning of new lifelong relationships. We've seen that the value of relationships that gets built during these trying times count for a lot. Um, you know, in, in the good times, it's easy to have competition, to be competitive. It's in the trying times where companies and people and customers are risk averse. So people who are walking the road with you now, honor those relationships. They're, worth, they're really worth a lot to you in the long term. So, you know, honor those relationships and, uh, and, and look after those people. But I think that's, that's in a nutshell what we try to share with you guys. Um, if there's any value and you want to read more about this, we have information available and we're happy to share that with you um, via your emails and send you the links. But there's on our website um, for the SMEs, we, we've got some tools and information available. Uh, so if you go there, you could see um, information on lockdown. There's also a collaboration. What we have is the SME Symmetry Hub, where it offers um, various businesses the opportunity where we share information with SMEs and access information and, and documentation that works for their business. It's simple stuff, even as you don't need to draw up a letter in these tough times and you want to remain liquid and you need to ask your landlord for an extension or, re, or negotiated um, rental uh, or an, a plan going forward. There's documentation available there that's already drafted. You pop in your name, you pop in your particulars, and you send it to the landlord in order to ask for the, the uh, for some debt relief. Um, there's also the 
a collection of stuff that we've got available, which is the Combat COVID collection. And then there's also a mini guide in terms of what we can share with you guys um, to for your businesses to remain uh, fighting fit. So uh, thank you. Um, and I'm going to introduce to you as well now Mark Dawson. Mark is our Managing Director at Retail Capital Asset Finance. Uh, I think Mark wanted to just, with the forum, sharing some questions uh, between Mark and myself. We're happy to see if we can uh, answer those for you. Yes, so thank you, Charles. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, so I think just before we start answering questions, um, it's important to say that by no means are we experts um, at some of the type of information and um, uh, funding, relief funding that's available to you. So uh, we will attempt to try and answer questions um, um, as best as we can. Um, but probably at best we'll be able to um, um, put, point you in the right direction, um, hopefully. Um, and if we're not able to, um, uh, we've got a, a list of what the questions are and what we can do is once we've got the actual answers, we'll get you an email um, with hopefully some kind of um, clarity. So if I, if I can just take a look at what we've got here, uh, there's a question here from Lance Viditsky. Um, and the question is, what should dentists be doing now with salaries? Um, Charles, do you want to have a, a crack at that? Yeah, um, if I can share with you guys that, look, I'm, I'm by no means a human resources um, uh, expert, but I can tell you guys that based on what we've seen, it's within the current legislation that you are allowed to look at salary reductions for your staff uh, during these times. Understand that these times are to remain liquid and survive. If your staff truly believe in you with them and you share with them that, you know, if you, you in the good times will share wealth and in the bad times we bat down the hatches and we're all feeling the pain, I think it's reasonable to have those discussions. And if you need to look at some form of a reduction in their salaries, uh, it's definitely something you should be looking at. Um, but I'm also going to advise caution in that don't say we're going to reduce salaries and you're still getting your fair cut or your senior management's getting their fair cut. I think if we're going to make that decision, it starts at the top. And, and we have to, uh, you know, if we're going to feel the pain, everybody feels the pain. We can't just say, well, we've got a big staff compliment. We, I'm going to let X, Y, Z feel the pain. So... Uh, is it something that's necessary? Guys, if we're not liquid, your business is going to close. So if you know that it's going to help you and get through the tough times, then it's definitely something we should be exploring. Yeah, there's another question here. Um, it's from Neil Williams. And the question is, the SAFT loans, who pays them back? Is it employees or employer? So the SAFT loan is aimed towards the employees. But the, the, the trust and the banks doesn't have the ability to process those um, from the individual um, staff members. So the loan gets applied via the companies. The employees are liable for that debt. And it doesn't sit with the employer. The employer actions the, the loan on behalf of the staff but the staff is liable and the company will be informed if the staff isn't honoring that repayment, but it, there's no liability as far as I'm aware that sits with the, uh, the, the company itself. Okay, there's a question here from Shiraz Khan. Um, he says, what do I do regarding tenants? Uh, they are not working. I also need the rental. So I'm assuming um, that he's a property owner and um, or has some kind of a, um, a premises where he's trading from, practicing from, and he's got several tenants. Mm. Um, do you want to have a crack on how you'd answer that? I don't know. Um, I can give him best practice. Um, the, the reality is if they don't have the money, they're not going to pay. Um, but if you are engaging with them um, and you have multiple properties, I think most of the guys, if I'm looking at what I can see the trends are, um, if you can pay something, it's better than nothing. And what we're doing is we're saying, 
Um, and, and the way we've also looked at our businesses that we engage with is saying, well, what can you afford? And we are, you know, we, we assist everybody that we have been dealing with. Uh, I can almost, I can certainly say we've had a hundred percent, you know, that we've assisted them wherever we can, but our business also needs to survive. So if I can use it by the same virtue, you know, I wouldn't give him a complete payment holiday from a rental perspective and say, okay, well, let's try. Can we try and halve it in order to help you? So then at least you still remain, have some liquidity coming in. Um, but yeah, I, th I think we need to deal on those on a case to case basis. But if you're not engaging and you're just going to force them, they're not going to pay. So I think there needs to be engagement. Yeah. So let me just add to that. Um, so, so clearly what's happening in our world right now is, um, we literally on a daily basis are getting requests from customers asking us for debt relief. And I'm talking specifically in the asset finance space. Um, and, and ours is a simple kind of approach to be quite honest with you. Um, and, and as is the same with many of the big banks now and other finance companies, um, we're in it together. Uh, there's no point in enforcing your, um, your, your rights in terms of the agreements that you have. Um, what we are hoping to see, though, is that there's a, um, a relief being provided by all creditors. So whether you have a landlord, um, you know, or you have other finance institutions, um, if we can see um, and, and it's, you're able to illustrate that everybody's in it together, I think everybody kind of realizes that we have to go through this process uh, for some time. Um, the way that we've approached it at the moment is we're engaging with customers um, on, a, on a verbal level, telephonically, on each request. Uh, we've provided two months. Um, and then what we've um, suggested is that at the end of that two-month period, we'll do a, a, a further review. Um, and, and that's simply because we don't know how this thing is going to unfold within the next month or two, or three for that matter. Okay, so that's kind of where we are at the moment. There's a lot of unknown um, scenarios that are playing out and uh, we're just kind of having to live with it and address these as we go on. Um, Mark, if I can add as well, I think, uh, and speaking from, so that's from an asset finance perspective and then on the funding side, I can tell you that we've more than 60% of our current client base, we've given some either zero recurrence in terms of not collecting in terms of debit orders uh, from a payment perspective, which we've given them payment holidays and or adjusted to a very small percentage in line with their current trade in order to get through this period. So I think, you know, um, we, everybody needs to understand we're in this together and, and we have to come out the other side. So try and help one another for as long as possible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's another question here from Anthony Julius. Um, it says, does retail capital assist medical and dental practitioners with finance before, i.e. before COVID-19 and what is the status now? So, um, Anthony, my response is absolutely. Um, we've uh, supported uh, medical and dental prior, be it from a funding perspective, an asset finance perspective. Um, and looking at various mechanisms. So definitely. And the fact that that practices are affected and do we fund now? Absolutely. We are looking at those too. We understand. So what Max, I think I can only speak for our company, but what makes us different is that we understand the business owners and entrepreneurs, and we know that we're not going to see, we know that businesses are closed now. So, you know, um, we know that they're going to reopen at some stage. So the reality is, do we fund them and assist them prior COVID and after? Definitely. Okay, there's another question here from Lance Poditsky. Is the Sakuma Relief Fund a lump sum of 25,000 rands and pay out to small businesses or are they loans or repayment from the Rupert Fund? Question. It says your all other funds seem to be interest-free loans. So the Sakuma website crashed. Um, I filled out an online waiting form and every day there's no response. Is this, am I wasting my time? So there's quite a few questions there. Do you want to yeah. tackle the first part? Is the Sakuma Relief Fund a lump sum payout of 25,000? 
Mark, I'm going to, uh, I'm happy to hand that back to you. I'm not, um, I'm not the expert in terms of the additional funds. I'm not going to um, pretend that I am, but I'm happy to investigate. And if I can get um, Lance's details, I'm happy to investigate and come back to him with pleasure. We have, okay. Yeah. So, so certainly, as I said, I'm, I, we're no experts in, in, in able to answer all of these things. So we can, we can point you in the right direction and try and provide you some kind of information after this meeting. Um, there's another question here from uh, Kamal Kumar. He says, how do we get a response from SAFT? Um, applications have to be done through our banks um, or the Sukuma Relief Program. I say, I've got no response from either of them. How do you apply for funding from retail capital? Okay, so the first part of the question is once again, we can't answer that. We'll try and get back to you point you in the right direction. Uh, in terms of funding from ca uh, retail capital, um, shall go ahead, answer. So um, if you're looking for assistance, if you go to our website, there's a, uh, um, a customer portal, which you can actually fill in um, in order for us to engage. Um, if you want to actually just have conversations, you, you can contact us and we, or leave your details and we'll contact you. And if you want to apply for funding, there's also an application um, portal where you can actually seamlessly go through the entire process without actually having to wait to, for people to respond. So there's an online version of applica applying. Um, and if you, so that's for direct funding. And for asset finance, there's also an asset finance section where you can ask us to say that you're interested in, in um, acquiring the asset and can we look at ways in which we can structure it. Um, I think just to share as well, you know, that everybody can fund stuff. Uh, what we believe, what we're good at is that customization, understanding your needs and making sure that it's, you know, if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't be transacting and taking in a, or, or occurring that cost. So what we try and do is see what is the best way in order to structure these finances for you so that you either have the best outcome long term that you know you're paying the least or you're having the biggest tax break that you can get for it and 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 so the outcome is in order to what's the best financial solution for your business and if we can assist in that then we're happy to okay right now there aren't any other questions um anything else from anybody else on the floor you would like to ask questions um, directly to Mark or Shal, you can just unmute yourself and um, ask them thanks. All right. I don't see any further questions popping up or anyone asking questions. Thank you very much, Shal and Mark, for your time. Um, if any of you would like to get hold of them directly, Paula has popped their contact details in the chat box. Please just take down their email. If you have any topic suggestions for our lockdown sessions, please email info at ivodent.co.za. Catch this session to rewatch and all previous sessions on Ivodent SA's YouTube channel and the link on the Facebook and WhatsApp groups. If you want to be put on the closed WhatsApp group, please send your cell phone number through to info at ivodent.co.za. Please join us tomorrow morning, same time, same place. Learn why and how guided biofilm therapy is a systemic, predictable solution for dental biofilm management in professional prophylaxis. Well-known local Swiss Dental Academy accredited trainer and oral hygienist, Derna Grobler, will be sharing her knowledge. Lastly, I just want to mention again that we do have face shields in stock. They come in five per pack and they retail for 505 rand excluding that. I hope you all have a lovely day and we'll see you back tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody.